Hello, welcome to Char Reads. Today I'm going to talk about all the books I read in April, which was not a lot. It was four and they're all really short. Um, didn't have a great reading month in April. I was away three out of the four weekends, so didn't have that much time. And also I've been getting back into fan fiction, which is just like consuming all of my reading time. Anyway, four is better than zero, so let's get started. The first book I have to talk to you about is Less by Andrew Sean Greer. This won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction last year, and you can really tell why. Firstly, it does mention, like it's about a writer who's about to turn 50, I'll just give the plot first, about a writer who's about to turn 50 called after, I'm very lispy with my teeth now. Um, he's called Arthur Less, and uh, he's just a bit of a, a sad character, and he's broken up with his young boyfriend of, how many years, nine years or something like that, um, and that ex of his has gone and got married. Well, he's got engaged and he's gonna have a wedding and um, they're all kind of part of the same friendship group and Arthur's like, I could not be at that wedding. Um, I need to have a good excuse to not go at that wedding. So he just takes up a load of his invitations to go to events around the world and writing retreats and whatnot. So the character in it is also a writer and it just, it kind of like screams Pulitzer, like they even mention someone going after a Pulitzer um, and it is very well crafted and it's very like thematic um, but it is also just quite a quiet read, it's just like about a dude living his, you know, existential crises. I feel like if I was like 40 I would adore this. I found it a little bit pretentious and I can't relate to it as much um, but you know, it was a good read. I think I gave all of these books three stars. I think this was just a three star month. I'm gonna check that. Yep, all three stars. So yes, this was a three star. Three stars to me means it was good. Like I enjoyed it, it just didn't blow me away and it also didn't disappoint me. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, yeah, Arthur Less was just like quite a sad character. I kind of assume that people in there or like just about to turn 50 have their shit together in that they've kind of like resolved all of the issues they had when they were 20 um, and maybe like have gained some new ones along the way but it really feels like this guy was like trapped with the same insecurities and problems of his younger self and I feel like that was written about a bit but I maybe that is just a lesson I'm gonna have to learn as I grow older but I'm really hoping it isn't because that's sad I don't want to live if I can't improve. I don't want to live as a bit strong. I just mean like I hope I don't end up like this guy pretty much. That's enough of that. Next book I have is Peach by Emma Glass. This is like maybe the weirdest book I've ever read. It was so bizarre. Um, so our main character Peach is I think 16 years old. Um, she's goes to school in England somewhere. It opens with Peach being what you kind of find out is like sexually assaulted um quite like uh, horrifically it's really like scary and uncomfortable um and she kind of grows home and her parents like don't notice that she's bleeding and she goes and like cleans herself up and that um but like there's also this whole thing about how every person is also not just a person so she's peach so she's always talking about how she's like soft and but like or sometimes it's like moldy and sometimes it's like furry um both of her parents are like weird sex addicts so i didn't really get that um but they have another baby and the baby is like a giant jelly baby um the the man that's pursuing her um and raped her was is like a giant sausage a giant greasy sausage and he like has stalks her and like rubs himself against windows like and looks in at her and then goes off and then just she leaves there's like the huge greasy streak from his body um her boyfriend is called green oh green sweet and he's like a literal tree he's like everything every every way he's described is really tree like um i'm gonna find where that happens green shakes little leaves as he laughs his laugh is deep and in his chest his breath tickles his twiggy throat and makes deep gentle noises Pretty Peach, so fascinated by this guy. He pulls me in close from behind and tucks his long, thin fingers around my widening waist. So everybody is has a thing and they really embody that thing, both physically, like Peach swells, she's like getting fat and it's like, is she pregnant? It's a, it's a weird kind of metaphorical thing. Um, and in some ways that was really delectable. Like the way it's written is kind of like, it's 
it's like a poem you need to analyze in GCSE English Lit. But also, like, sometimes it's really nice and tasty. It kind of felt like it was a girl dealing with her trauma around this incident by whatever the opposite of anthropomorphizing something is um, to all of the people around her. So like she gives them all of these kind of physical characteristics that um, that she kind of like senses from their character. But I feel like that kind of vision is ruined throughout the book because it's so heavy handed, those descriptions, that you're like, oh, okay, I can't, I can no longer believe that this is like a normal teenage girl dealing with this trauma and instead we're in a weird fantasy world. It's less relatable when it's so like abstractly fantastical, do you know what I mean? Um, really like visceral some of the descriptions of this like crazy stalker sausage fan rapist. I feel so conflicted about this because in some ways like there were some parts of it that were five stars totally. Some of her descriptions of stuff I really like the way she opposite of anthropomorphizes things um, but some parts of it were just too literal and it was very, it was annoying. I feel like it had so much potential to be like exactly incredible um, but it was just like really weird. I don't know. Read it. Tell me what you think. Ah! The next book I have is Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck. Um, I've never read a Steinbeck book before. This was for a book club I have with a couple friends and the last book we read for it was On the Road and I don't know how we ended up with this. Um, I feel like it was far too close to On the Road um, and that kind of pulled back from my enjoyment of it to be honest. Um, so this is Steinbeck's, I think the first book that he wrote but not the first one that was published. Um, and it's about this group of guys in Monterey in California, like seaside town that I know from being like really bougie nowadays. But back then it was like old Spanish immigrants. So Monterey was like a slightly more wealthy place. And Tortilla Flats was more of a like really buzzing community of uh, these people called the Paisanos. Yeah, it's about this, this guy called Danny and his friends. And basically they go off to war this was first published in 1935, by the way. So they go off to World War I, um, him and a couple of friends, they come back and they've always been like homeless. It kind of seems that way. Uh, but while they've been away, um, Danny's granddad, oh, I'm gonna get this all wrong. Is it his granddad? Something like that. Uncle um, has died and left Danny two houses. And Danny's like, oh shit, I'm not a bum anymore. I have two houses, I'm gonna go live in one. And then he's like, oh, I'll have another house. I can like charge rent. Um, and he runs into his friend Pylon. And he's like, Py he basically like says, oh, Pylon, you can live in my other house. You just have to give me like $15 a month. Um, and Pylon's like, yeah, sure. And then <laughs> Pylon doesn't have any money. So he gets another friend of theirs in to live with him being like, oh, it's fine. All you have to do is pay $15 a month. But they also like randomly homeless and don't really work and they're all kind of bums and sit around drinking wine all day <laughs> and they get someone else in. And then they manage to burn down that house and then they all go live in Danny's main house. So there's this crew of them, it kind of fluctuates. I think they're like four core and then it kind of grows like six, maybe seven um, of these, these guys that don't do anything. And they literally, it's hilarious how Pylon's like, oh, I got this $2, I'm gonna go give it to, I'm gonna go give it to Danny for the rent. Um, and then he's like, oh yeah, but like, I have to pass the wine shop first. And like, Danny likes wine, I should just give it to Danny in wine. So he gets the wine, gets like halfway up the hill and runs into someone else. And they're like, oh, what are you doing with that wine there? And he's like, oh, I'm just gonna go give it to Danny, like for rent. And they're like, oh yeah, but like Danny, you know, Danny drinks too much wine already. Like it would be better for him if we just sat down and drank the wine. <laughs> and that's like how every situation plays out in this, is that they all convince themselves it's a good idea for them to drink wine. And it, all the wine is in gallons and I just love that. It's really funny. Um, but also like the things that I disliked about On The Road is that it was like just kind of like pointless bandits with no purpose and not contributing to society. This had the exact same problems, apart from 
in On The Road, like, none of them really cared about each other. Like, they said that they cared about each other, but not really. Like, this is just, like, a really, really tight crew, and they do care about each other a lot, and that's very sweet. Another thing that was quite nice about it is that it was, like, episodic. Every little chapter um, kind of had a different sort of plot. Uh, it, it wasn't, like, there wasn't one whole plot running through the thing, I guess, besides, like, them just living their lives. Um, but the, the little chapters had their own plots and that's cute. Each chapter has a little subtitle, so for example chapter 12 is how Danny's friends assisted the pirate to keep a vow and how as a reward for merit the, do the pirate's dog saw a holy vision. So pirate is the only guy out of any of these that um, make any money and he's basically this like down and out guy who uh, he goes um, and like cuts wood all day to make two quarters or something like that and, um, and he's like hiding it <laughs> he's hiding it and then he goes and like bums his food from restaurants uh, but he's basically been amassing this great wealth and they were like oh we should get him to come live in the house so we can get and then we can get the money from him um, and he goes to live in the house and they try and take the money but then Pirate's like no 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 I'm saving up to buy a gold candle he also has like five dogs um, <laughs> I'm saving up to buy a gold candlestick or candle hold or whatever um, because my I made a promise to the Lord that my dog like eight years ago or whatever would like was ill and I promised that if it got better I would buy this gold candlestick um and they're all like oh right did the dog survive and he was like yeah yeah I mean he's dead now but like I still owe the candlestick to the church and like so he's been saving up these like a quarter a day or however much it was um and like they they basically this was the this was the chapter where he actually managed to get the gold candlestick um but it's it's really funny because they're all because they're all such bums he was like they're all like oh no pirate when you go to church you need to be wearing nice clothes so they have to like all between us rustle up all of the nice clothes they can um so so many like nice little charming things uh but it's also like i didn't have any reason to care about anyone <laughs> like it wasn't very relatable. I know like a lot of people, I, it, I always get comments being like, you can't complain about, like, you can't rate a book down because you couldn't relate to it. I'm like, yes I can. This is not me saying objectively this is a good or bad book. It's me being like, I like this book or I didn't like it. That's what you're here for. If you want a voice of God, go read Spark Notes or something. Um, anyway, <laughs> ran over. This is fine. It was like quite charming, but I just, I didn't, it wasn't thrilling to me. Um, I'd like to read some other Steinbeck, you know, in my life um, someday. But yeah, that was this one. The last book I have is Silence in the Age of Noise by, fuck, I didn't look up how to pronounce this, Erling Kage? Kage? I'm sorry. This is just like a little kind of coffee table book that I actually bought for my flatmate um, for her birthday, just like as a little bonus. And she read it and then she was like, oh, do you want to read it? Because I think you'd like it. And I was like, yeah, sure, thank you. Um, so it's a really, it's like quite a nice book. Like it's, it's all quite largely typed and there are photos every few pages, like really gorgeous. It's a, it's a really nice thing. Um, so this man, Erlin, he's a Norwegian explorer. So he's best known for having like, gone on his own to the South Pole, I believe, is that his thing? He once spent 50 days walking solo across Antarctica, his radio broken. And he, but he's also like done a whole other bunch of things, like he, he owned a publishing house in the past. Um, he's also like, I think 50, he has two kids, like just quite like a well-versed man of the world. And this is his kind of treatise on silence and the importance of silence and how we don't, um, like think or use silence as much as we should obviously a lot of this is founded on him just being silent for 50 days on this trip to Antarctica and also just like generally in the outdoors appreciating silence in his alone time but he also goes into loads of other types of silence like uh, silence between partners being like comfortable in each other's silence and um, the silence you know before a, a bass line drops in a song for example and how you need the silence to have the highs. Um, this is one of those kind of books, like any sort of self-helpish book, where you feel like you know a lot of, you know all the things, but you haven't spent much time thinking about them, or you know you haven't been paying attention to them. Uh, and this was just like quite a calm, nice reflection on the value of silence um, to people. Yeah, it, it like touched me. I did actually really quite enjoy it. I. Uh, I'm, I don't spend a lot of time in silence because when I'm on my own I'm almost always listening to podcasts and um, 
and sometimes I just like purposefully don't like I will I know this is a really really small but like I will walk the five minutes to my studio without headphones on but yeah I, it, it's interesting because it talks about like meditation and that kind of direction of things but contrary to meditation meditation is all about like emptying your mind and he's saying no just empty empty your ears and then your mind has more space to think so it's saying like you, you use this time to think and you know be at one with yourself etc um but the best way to do that is by removing all of this like external noise 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 um to kind of be able to focus yourself inward yeah i would recommend it uh, especially if you feel you feel a bit hectic or a bit like you haven't had enough time to process yourself um this is a nice kind of read to remind you about that sort of centering um yeah so these those are the four books that i had this month um i bet this video is still gonna be the same length though i've just gone on about it i, I was gonna sit down and say oh i don't actually want to talk that much this month here are the books <laughs> but uh you know when i get talking never stop uh fabulous i will see you next month for um i don't know maybe not that many books again because i'm enjoying this whole fan fiction thing but we'll see um, let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts were, were on them, and I just I throw it out of frame. Um, <laughs> I'm getting so lispy because my mouth is dry and I've got my braces in. Let me know if you read any of them or if I've intrigued you to read any of them. Again, like, I'm not pushing any of these on you. They're all threes. Um, but, you know, maybe certain aspects of them will, will call out to you. Um, yes, yeah, see you next month. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.